It's a very different mode is today. We're in race mode. But when I tell you race mode, I'm talking about speeds you've never dreamed of. Today we're going to meet Andy Green, and he is the man who's going to drive the remarkable Bloodhound SSC and attempt to smash the world land speed record. A record he currently holds at 763 miles an hour. But Mr. Green, he's looking to do a thousand miles an hour. And this rather racy little number is a radical. This is a British sports car that Andy Green is using to help get him acclimatized for how to drive at supersonic speeds. This car is going to behave in the same way they believe aerodynamically in corners as the Bloodhound is going to behave when it's on a straight out in the African desert in 2014. What are the qualities you're going to need to take the vehicle to that speed? Well, I'm uniquely lucky in doing this I'm in the history of 110 plus years of a landscape record. I'm only the second fighter pilot ever to attempt it. And the only previous one was Henry Seagrave, who flew biplanes at the end of the First World War. So actually in the modern era, I'm the only fast jet pilot ever to do this. And those are very much the skills I rely on. It's the ability to see things a long way ahead, anticipate a lot, cope with the noise, the G-force, the, uh, the complexity of the car and all its systems. Because of course Bloodhound is a three engine car. We have a jet engine, we have the rocket motor, we have the Cosworth Formula One engine, which is the pump for the rocket motor. All of that needs to work all at the same time and I need to control it all. So in my terms, I need to be a jet fighter pilot to do that. That's where I get the skills. How anybody else could get to be able to control all of that, do it at the speed and do it safely without that background is a huge undertaking. So I'm very lucky to have that head start. And today you've been honing your skills with this radical sports car. Just briefly tell us how this will help you when it comes to the actual world record. It's one of those common misconceptions that driving in a straight line at high speed is just hold the steering wheel still. The huge loads on the car in terms of the aerodynamics, the crosswinds, the, uh, the lack of stability you get from the, uh, the wheels, the changes in the aerodynamics, um, push the car all over the place. And just like any high performance race car, it's continuously sliding and wriggling on the surface. So it needs tiny steering corrections the whole time. One of the things I'm learning with this fantastic track car, the Radical, is actually how to judge where the grip level is, whether the back end sliding, whether the front end sliding, do I steer out of it, do I back off on the power a little bit, how to control a car at the limit of its grip. And when we're, as soon as we get round the corner and the corner starts to open up, suddenly I've got grip to spare, back onto full power, judging that moment precisely. Because if I can't control Bloodhound at the limit of its grip, we may not be able to get it up to a thousand miles an hour. If it starts to step sideways because we get a sudden gust of a crosswind, or there's, uh, one of the petals falls out of the, uh, the nozzle at the back of the jet engine. Very unlikely, but it could happen. If it steps sideways, I need to be able to not panic, identify it, shut the engine down, put a little bit of steering correction on, and actually keep the car straight. Here is where I practice all of that. Bloodhound has also developed amazingly from not just a world record speed attempt, but also to become the biggest ever science lesson in the world because now there have been over two million children all over the world that have switched on to the Bloodhound project and that are following in its process. There are over 5,000 schools throughout Britain that are taking part in projects relating to Bloodhound. This is the most exciting science lesson your kids are ever going to get. 